this industry five years ago, but I've been in this country for 20 years and uh, I used to run physical therapy offices. I did the real estate. I was just a salesperson, so I did a lot of different things. Uh, only one thing I can tell you, I was always my own person and I always ran the business, so I would learn. Like when I started the dispatching, I went and I worked as a dispatcher for two, three months to learn inside of the business because that's what successful people do. You cannot just jump into it without knowing basics. And then um, every time I just decided to go on my own, maybe just because I like to do things certain way and I'm a little bit more perfectionist. So I would like things to be done the right way, legal way and try to just improve. From Arizona, he went to Colorado. From Colorado, he went to Orlando. Orlando, I took him to Massachusetts. Massachusetts, he got back to Alabama. Alabama to Florida. I wanted to make sure that the load I am taking him today from Florida back to Kansas, all those miles and money gonna put me at good rate per mile. And I did come up with dollar ninety for all of that. Believe me, if you would see me five years ago, I would be like one of the girls. What is a dry one? What is a reefer? What are the chains? What are we talking about? Fifth wheel? How many wheels the truck has? Well, now I know, <laughs> but it takes time. But if I could have done it without being in the trucking industry, without having husband or boyfriend who is a truck driver, without uh, being in transportation whatsoever, if I could have done it, anyone could do. I think as long as you are uh, have a goals and you like to negotiate you're not afraid of the phone and you improving yourself it takes a lot of time to improve and by improving i mean you need to be on top of the things you need to see what's going on with the market with with um, economy in general you need to see what are your gaps for example my gaps were uh, production in usa it took me a while i had to learn my shippers my receivers i have my black book i have my good book so i was writing things down so when i'm talking to brokers just by the name name of the shipper or receiver i already know what i'm dealing with how many hours i give them to unload or load and it takes time and that's one of the homeworks for my uh, students we're gonna start writing down what do we have to put in the good book and the bad book I do this patch every day and when you do it every day you know from first hand what's going on with market is north carolina paying today or it's not paying what's going on in washington what's going on in california and it doesn't matter that i dispatch just reefers i love reefers i still take care of i always check what's going on with dry vents what's going on with flatbeds and i stay connected with all my students so we talk we discuss the rates they call for advice so my uniqueness is that i do believe that you need to know the foundations and foundation starts with understanding term terminology understanding demand and supply density of the loads density of the trucks understanding the seasons production this is foundation understanding the cost of insurance equipment how much uh, uh, driver salary is per mile how much is maintenance should be put away so you need to know the financial side as well if you decide to be a good dispatcher some areas we're not gonna pick up the loads okay because we're gonna be worried about our drivers mm -hmm. because for most of you it is your family members when we're gonna be co uh, covering Colorado area I'm gonna tell you which roads you're never gonna take which which loads you should live to somebody maybe who local who knows how to drive there but you're just not gonna take just because it's five hundred dollars more because let's be realistic right now drivers getting paid from 55 to 65 cents it depends on the truck new or older efficiency let's say from 40 cents to 55 cents right here we already at dollar 10 per mile just the driver and fuel then i already calculated approximately it depends how good your insurance your insurance costs you from 12 to 20 cents per mile so we already at dollar 30 right then we're gonna add equipment if you have brand new truck like everybody tries to have now brand new reefer 
or dry van or step deck, your equipment cost you 35-40 cents. So we are $1.70. We're not talking about office, dispatcher pay, maybe some accidents, some cargo. So how can we be profitable if we're gonna be booking loads for $1.60 average? Me as a owner of the company, I need to come up 12 cents per mile to make it happen. And that's what dispatcher needs to realize. They need to know the cost. And most of them, they don't. Is your driving, right? It can go in between your wooden floor. It's really hard to get out. So besides that, we're gonna ask about commodities, temperature, transit. We always gonna ask one question. Is a product palletized? Is it on a pallet? We don't really come here just to learn how to post the truck, how to make a phone call. We are here to make sure we make profit to owner operator, to the company, and we are preventing liability because we don't want to be out of business just because we do not know our commodities or we do not know the roads or we don't know what we do, do not want to deal with. So it's a lot of knowledge. Believe me, right now my class, they have the last homework, they have 10 days to prepare and their heads are spinning. And finally, they telling me, Alexandra, I understand now. I need to know so much before I can still and try. Printing equipment, chemicals and fabricated metals, com computers, electronics and... Okay, that's so much. that means we are dealing maybe with some hazmat, right? Yeah. Because if they for, uh, uh, produce a lot of uh, uh, chemicals, usually they need to have driver who has tanker endorsement or company which has a hazmat certification. 80% of people who come to this class, they are working just because they have so much knowledge. Sometimes you go across people who've been dispatching for a few years and they don't know have the simple knowledge about all these things. They never were learning how to put this together or they never had time. And that's what I'm trying to do. So my uniqueness, I'm trying to change this industry one person at a time. So hopefully we're gonna have smart tracking. So the rate's gonna go up. So we don't just book the loads just because we need to get rid of the truck. We pre-plan, we negotiate, and we learn how to say no. Because if we do it together, professional way, hopefully the shippers and brokers will not gonna take advantage of us. We divided the USA map by the zones and each student had to tell us uh, what, what is the production, it's what grows, what seasons, what can we have there for flatbed, what we should watch out, what for the reefer, what for the van. And they finally understand that even knowing when, where is hurricane or when is the snow or when is the flowers are going to be selling, you know, well, Mother's Day, it's going to be Valentine's, so what's going to happen? Do we know where the markets come from? Yes, it's come from Miami, it comes from Florida. Well, so what's going to happen? That means that ratio of loads to trucks going to change and they're going to be paying in Florida. So can we pre-plan that? Just simply knowing holidays, simply knowing when before people go, kids go to school, market goes down. Why? People don't really shop for food. They have to spend money on the dry goods. What does it mean? That means that maybe dry lands are going to go up because they need to bring all that to Walmart, to Costco, to, uh, to sell it. So just basic distribution and what's going on. It's, it's, it's a lot of things to put together. But when, when it finally starts uh, making sense, you see the logic in it. Most common mistake, which most of the dispatcher nowadays do, they do not pre-plan. Because in this market, if you book and load on Monday and it's going to East Coast or it's going to South, which South is down now, the moment you still talking and negotiating that load, you should be already posting your truck in South Carolina, in New Jersey, and see what are you dealing with. What is the closest load is gonna be there? So when you calculate in your rate per mile, you can add that dead head. And you can see, can I bring him back if this guy needs to be home in Illinois on a weekend, and I am sending him to North Carolina. And there is only three trucks showing, three loads, within 100 miles dead ahead. What do you think chances are you gonna find a load? Pretty slim. 
Today I'm covering four areas. It's called the Southwest, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. That's mm -hmm. one hour. We are one hour behind. We are one hour behind. Is that important to remember? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For driver, for us, when we book in the lot. A lot of dispatchers are trying their best to do their job but they would like to ask opinion of the owner what he wants to do and nowadays in this market doesn't really work because you talk to the broker you ask about the price you start negotiating then you call your owner owner doesn't really know what's gonna happen in new jersey what's gonna happen in florida what's gonna happen in texas he just thinks about this moment and of course, he's never happy, so he's gonna say, no, not enough, look for something else. Well, 45 minutes goes by, this load is already gone. So that means 20% of the load's already covered with the first few hours in the morning, right? So what are we dealing with now? Now we're dealing with another maybe 50% of the loads which are not paying as good as morning loads. So now they call him again. Well, no, the first one was better. I want that load. Well, that is gone. But now he remembers. Well, it was 2000. Now it's 17. I want my 2000 back. Well, it's already 3 p.m. He's still not loaded. So what both of you doing? You're wasting your time. And as much as I love wor uh, working with owner operators, I always ask one simple thing. You do your professional job, driving, delivering on time, checking my bill of weddings. If it's clean, if it's no shortage, if it's no damage, if it's no rejection, make sure you check your hours of operation and you do run legally. I would do my job. And then once a week, we're gonna talk about it. I just need to know when you need to be home, when you need to take break and let me do my job as a professional dispatcher. And then we can adjust because all of you need to reevaluate one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month. It takes time to get used to each other. So new dispatchers, when they start, it's very tough on them. But it takes time to get used to how the person runs, how he sleeps, even sleeping habits, and how picky he is. So my suggestion, guys, let dispatchers do their job because that's what we are here to do.